we have with us again the Jili Kure. Let's check it out. We're currently on the road driving the Geely Cool Ray, but before we talk about how this drives, let's talk about the vehicle itself first, exterior, interior. The Cool Ray has been Geely's most popular product here in the Philippines ever since it was launched in 2019. It just won't stop selling in big numbers, and that's for good reason. We've reviewed this before and we'll be seeing after its update if it's still worth it. Pricing has already substantially increased. This is the 2023 Geely Cool Ray SE Sport and it's priced at 1,299,000 Philippine pesos. Now looking at the exterior, the Cool Ray is honestly starting to show its age, but it still does look good particularly with the updated front fascia with the X-shaped grille and bumper combination. We no longer have fog lights, but at least the full LED headlights with LED DRLs are sufficient. Also, we love the new mesh pattern on the grille. The side remains the same as what we showed you before, except for the red accent here, which gets a different look. We still get the two-tone paint job with the black roof and blacked out 18-inch alloy wheels wrapped in continental tires. Towards the back, the overall look is the same but with a new bumper which is very sporty. That also houses your quad exhaust pipes and rear fog light. Everything else is the same and opening the power tailgate which does open with a good speed reveals 330 liters of space. It's honestly quite small compared to rivals but it does get the job done with enough space for around 45 pieces of small luggage. Now we're inside the Geely Cool Ray SE Sport and as you can see, Initially, everything looks the same as the previous Cool Rays from the first time it came out all the way until now. It still looks very much the same. And there's only one difference actually and we'll get to it right now because this unit doesn't have it. So the actual 2023 Cool Ray SE Sport now has a new electronic gear shifter. This one still has the old one so there is that but the rest is all the same. So first the materials are really good of course. Everything is soft touch plastic, soft touch on the door. Everything feels really good. and everything looks premium feels premium that's how it is here in the gd cool ray and the interior actually still looks really good even after almost three or four years in the market especially with this variant because this has the two-tone red and black interior and then going to the steering wheel still the same steering wheel of course the same steering wheel that we find in other geely products as well so it's built in telescopic so that's of course really really nice lots of adjustment there and then we also have our paddle shifters and our stocks here which look like the ones that you'd get on a volvo vehicle so there is that then of course we have our controls for our cruise control speed limiter on the left and then our audio controls and trip computer controls on the right then of course for the horn it's just your typical european car horn which sounds really really nice then for our instrument cluster we have an eight inch i believe eight inch or seven inch display here for the instrument cluster and it shows lots of information and it changes the this color as well depending on your drive mode so if it's eco it's blue if it's normal it's yellow and if it's sport it's red so that also looks really nice and it also matches the ambient lighting in this cabin by the way so whatever the color of your instrument cluster is the color of the ambient lighting as well then for the information you can find here there is our of course our trip computer our fuel economy or distance to empty which right now says zero so that's actually not accurate because this this last two bars of fuel left and this one says zero kilometers to empty then warnings radio phone settings everything is here and it's actually very easy to understand although i must say that it is quite hard to reset your trip computer so there is that and then moving to the center we have our 10.25 inch touchscreen infotainment system it's still the same one that we've seen ever since unfortunately still no apple carplay no android auto but at least the screen itself is very easy to use very easy to understand it's laid out pretty well one of the best when it comes to these chinese cars so it's really good and we have the qd link so you can mirror your phone actually here but yeah, unfortunate that we still don't have Apple CarPlay and or Android Auto in this card. And of course, this is also the display for our 360 camera. So put it in reverse and it shows your camera right there. And it looks really good. It's very HD. Although the angle for the view of the reverse might be a little bit too narrow. But at least we do have that. And it's really, really useful. Then moving down, we do have our climate controls over here. So unfortunately, we don't have a display here and not all the controls are here, but at least the most important ones such as the fan speed, temperature, recirculation, and different modes for the climate control are all there. But if you do need more controls, they're found here on the screen. And at least these are quite responsive and very easy to use as well. And also 
we do have ventilated seats by the way so that's controlled here in the screen and then moving on we do have some storage we can put our phone here and then our electronic gear shifter again new for the 2023 model this one still has the old one because it's an early unit and then moving further here we do have lots of controls here so again our driving modes eco and sport our hill descent control 360 camera our parking assist button and then our parking sensors electronic parking brake and auto hold and a spot here where you can put some stuff like cards and then two cup holders and some more storage over here which is really nice then of course under the center console is another large amount of storage so so that's really nice to have over here and then here our center armrest which is also wrapped in the red leather it looks really nice it also feels really good and under that is plenty of storage as well and the cover itself feels very solid it's really well built like everything else here inside this cabin and then for the seats these are the same seats you'd get on any cool ray variant but since this is the sport we do get a different pattern here so it's leather wrapped still with perforated leather but we do have these red accents as well which look really great then there's the fabric material and the s for sport in the middle and also red stitching by the way so this looks really good then the driver's seat itself is powered passengers manual and the seat itself is very comfortable i've never i never felt any problem with these in even with the long drive so yeah so really good seats really comfortable and now we can check out the rear seat and now we're here at the back of the cooler and like every cooler variant it is very spacious in here so as you can see i have loads of leg room knee room foot room really really good in terms of space and the seat itself is actually quite comfortable we do have the same color pattern as in front but we don't have the the fabric portion anymore but at least it's still the same pattern we still have the red accent we still have the leather perforation so that's really really nice then going back to the space and five feet and seven inches so again really good space the headroom though is a bit tight because of the panoramic sunroof which unfortunately doesn't go all the way maybe at least here but at least we do have that it really brightens up the cabin and it helps because this cabin actually feels a bit tight here in the back despite the space because we do have a very high window line here yes you can see it's really high the seat is really low as well so there is that but at least the panoramic sunroof does help make it feel a bit more spacious then materials here also still the same as in front we do have soft touch here in the door panel i thought this really hard touch plastic if i'm not mistaken it was hard touch plastic before but maybe they did update it here then we do have our leather armrest as well so everything here is still pretty good we do have two back pockets behind the front seats a single usb port unfortunately and we don't have air vents back here but at least the climate control based on what i can feel now does reach here although it is a bit warm sometimes then storage down there a, re a really flat floor by the way and then our center armrest here with two cup holders so really nice to have that and now let's go back to the test drive and now we're back on the road so this is not my first time to drive the Geely cool ray i've done so many about two times i already already had this for a week we have a review of the previous the pre-facelift version on our channel already so if you haven't seen that be sure to check it out as well so anyway before we continue let's talk about what's under the hood of the cool ray sport so this is still powered by the same engine as before so it's a 1.5 liter turbocharged three cylinder gasoline engine that produces 177 horsepower and 255 newton meters of torque compared to a seven speed dual clutch transmission and like before the cool rate definitely has a lot of power a lot of torque on on tap so anytime you need it it does give you everything that you want and everything that you need because right like now we're merging the u-turn slot so it does accelerate really well it feels really good you can really feel how good this car drives so we have the limiter set to 60 right now so there is did cut off the power there but it can it'll just keep going and going and going and that's something that's really nice about this vehicle then also the dual clutch is a wet type so it does shift really smoothly thankfully and lag is minimal although there are times that when you're let's say you're pushing the car a bit harder there will be a bit of lag when coming from a stop or when you suddenly press the pedal but other than that it's pretty good everything about the engine of this sprint is really good it sounds good it feels good and of course it drives really well when it comes to handling so steering feel in this car is what you'd expect from a crossover so it's really light when you're driving inside the city and it does weight up a bit when you're on the highway so it feels really good and also the vehicle itself handles really well so it's very well behaved it's very planted on the road and then also body roll is very minimal so really overall the engine and the steering feel of this car it feels really good so 
really a good driving car one of the best in the segment if i may say then also ride quality is another really good thing because this rides really smoothly so the suspension absorbs the bumps really well when you're passing on dirt roads it you can you, you actually won't feel that you're passing on the dirt road you won't feel the rocks you won't feel the stones it's just really smooth it's as if you're always on a really smooth road so that's also really nice and then road noise also really quiet wind noise really quiet so there's really nothing bad when it comes to those in this vehicle and even vibration so despite this being a three-cylinder Geely was able to successfully keep the vibrations here minimal so if you open the hood and look at the engine it's gonna be vibrating a lot but if you're in the road the car is idling you won't feel them at all although when you're outside it does sound like the car is a diesel so there is that but if you're inside the car you won't even feel them at all so another really excellent job over there and of course visibility as well really good i showed you earlier the 360 camera so that's really clear really helps and actually you don't even need it because you have really big windows really have big windshield both front and back so no issues at all when it comes to visibility as well that brings us to what this has as a flaw when you're on the road so it's not that bad but still the fuel economy is not the best so i was able to average around with uh, driving inside the city and on the highway around 13 kilometers per liter 11 kilometers per liter around that number so it's just right it's not good it's not bad and also the fuel tank is quite small so 45 liters only this is actually the first test drive unit in a while that i had to refuel eventually gas station visits will be very frequent in this vehicle especially if you push it hard so it does really drink fuel in that regard but of course if you're an economical driver like me you will be saving a lot of fuel and also it's also good to note that i did drive this a lot so i brought this to batangas pampanga where we are right now and then we'll, we'll still be driving back to manila so again fuel economy is not the best but it will do what i do think this vehicle lacks right now is driver assistance tech so most of its rivals like the Chang'an CS55 Plus, the Honda HRV, Toyota Corolla Cross if you want to consider that, they all have driver assistance tech already like autonomous emergency braking, forward collision warning, adaptive cruise control especially but this one only has blind spot monitoring so most of its rivals are very well equipped when it comes to driver assistance so this one is not that's something that they will definitely need to catch up on soon but regardless it's still pretty good. The Geely Coolray may not be the most well equipped in the segment and definitely not the newest but for its price it gives us nearly everything we need and want plus it drives so well. This really is one of the best crossovers on the market.